Kira Tato, no my Heidi Mai, Talo Falava, and warm Wellington greetings. When I lived in Wellington, I never got to say warm Wellington greetings because it was usually a howling gale, but today, of course, it's a beautiful day. So thank you very much indeed for coming this afternoon. Um, it's heroic of you at three o'clock in the afternoon to be all present and correct. Today, I wanted to do four things. I wanted to talk about who we are as the Health Workforce Advisory Board, what we're expected to do, how we hope to work, the benefits of our annual report to the Minister, and then to ask for your help in an ongoing way. So just to start, I would like to talk to you about what this new acronym, HEWAB, means and what, it, what it's going to do. It's been established under Section 11 of the New Zealand Public Health and Disability Act to provide the Minister of Health with advice on health workforce matters, including strategic direction, emerging issues and risks. It's also um, mandated to work with the Ministry of Health to provide strategic oversight and sector leadership for New Zealand's health workforce. Its terms of reference are not limited to, but encompass the following. Planning for New Zealand's health and disability system workforce, enabling greater participation of Māori in the health workforce, and partnering with Māori to better understand the needs and aspirations of that workforce, enabling greater Pacific participation and representation in the health workforce, education, training and development of the health workforce, recruitment, retention and distribution of the workforce, health workforce wellbeing, and supporting quality improvement, innovation and changed ways of working. This is what we aren't. We don't have any personnel funding or budget management responsibilities, and we're not involved in health sector employment relations. Now, following me, the Deputy Director General uh, Anna Clark is going to talk to you about the ER and how the connection will be with employment relations and the Health Workforce um, Advisory Board. So we're a break from the past um, and as a Section 11 committee, we have the following opportunity of an annual report to the Minister. Oh, sorry, I'll just do us as members. First of all, there's me. Uh, my background is in human rights. I was the EEO Commissioner for New Zealand, the first one, and undertook the inquiry into the aged care sector that resulted in the Equal Pay Award, and I've always had um, interest in research, interest in equal employment opportunities. Dr Joe Baxter, who's going to talk to us this afternoon, is, I believe, an expert in Māori retention, recruitment, in health workforce issues and her experiences at Otago are invaluable to the committee. Sophie Olaf is very, as an interesting young pharmacist who's already tackled us in our first meeting on Friday around intergenerational dynamics and picking up some of the points from the plenary session today. It's quite clear that intergenerational ways of working will be different and it's great to have Sophie on board. Andrew Connolly will be known to many of you as a senior clinician. He is also Deputy Commissioner at Waikato and brings a wealth of experience uh, to, the, to the new board. Whamuina Associate Professor Tai Sapoanga is an expert in Pacific Health Workforce Development at, from Otago University. You might notice a similarity between the Ministry of, Minister of Health's um, Dunedin electorate and the number of Otago University uh, representatives on our board, but I think those of us from Auckland will hold our own. Lorraine is one of those. She comes from the Bay of Plenty, so she's an North Islander. Lorraine will bring to us expertise both in nursing, nursing representation, and in the community and public health space. So in addition to Carl, who is from Gore and proud to be a Southland man, um, Carl is an expert in rural, mental, uh, rural and mental health issues and brings great expertise and a passion for e-learning in the mental health space. 
And Helen Mason will be known to many of you because she was CEO at Bay of Plenty. But she's going to Australia. Australia's gain is our loss. But she will be replaced as the CEO by the CEO of the Auckland DHB, Elsa Clare, who was here this morning. So I think we have a diverse and representative um, uh, participation on the new board. Our first meeting on Friday was stimulating and I think we'll challenge each other as well as uh, the Ministry in our thinking. How we, oh, how we plan to work was a focus of discussion at our first board meeting on Friday. And these were some of the principles that we agreed to. And I want to pay homage to Ray Lind, who, as the former uh, CEO of Korea Force, was uh, in charge of the interim committee that looked at setting up the Health Workforce Advisory Board. And our principles were developed in terms of some legacy points that he produced around how a new Health Workforce Advisory Board should work. I think all of us on the board are committed to uh, collegial and continuing and collaborative arrangements within the sector. We want, to, we want to know what the sector's issues are. We want to work closely with major stakeholders. We want to listen um, and we want to develop evidence-led, evidence research-led advice. We also um, would like to be able to be in a position to present to the Minister an imaginative options and some honest, honest dealing in terms of problem analysis. We do acknowledge, of course, the tension between short-term pragmatism and long-term um, aspirations. There is, I think, uh, some opportunities relating to the statutory mandate that we have to present an annual report to the Minister. And that is that it does provide an opportunity to measure and promote the value of the health workforce to New Zealand's economy, the community, whanau and individual well-being. Um, I foolishly indicated to the board that I would present at the first meeting a sort of meta-analysis, a quick lit review of all of the material that I could find on health workforce development in New Zealand um, in the last five or six years. So all of the research that had been written from a variety of aspects. Now, that was a foolish promise because it became, instead of a sort of a day's intense reading, it became weeks and weeks of scurrying around trying to find material. But one thing that emerged out of that process was a sense for me that the actual value of the health workforce, not only economically, but also socially and in terms of its community contribution, had been under-theorised and under-conceptualised. So if we were to take the 230,000 people at the Simpson report um, estimates is in the health workforce, and you say multiply that by 60,000 might, might be the average salary, you get into the billions and billions of dollars. That's before you look at the value of employment in communities. So for example, in Waitamata, um, and probably in all DHB areas, the DHB is of course the predominant employer with 7,500 staff ranging from Kuiper down to the Harbour Bridge, where obviously a major impact on our communities. And so I see as an important first step for the Health Workforce Advisory Board is to do some work around the value of the health workforce in general, which I think would help with discussions more broadly about values. It would help with discussion politically, perhaps with Treasury. It would help uh, in, career, in terms of career development and recruitment. Um, it could be valuable generally. So another, I think, important um, benefit of an annual report to the Minister is that we can bring critical and strategic workforce issues, not only to his attention, because he probably already know of many of them, but also to the attention of Parliament and to the public. We should be able to use that to engage more widely in terms of media debate about health workforce needs and strategic directions. 
and of course, hopefully, our annual report would help catalyse policy and perhaps legislative response. I think we're very, very lucky to be starting at a propitious time, just simply because of the huge number of health-related, health sector reform uh, reports that have been um, issued and promoted and read and widely distributed in the last year. So the mental health inquiry reports, there's um, Heather's report, the Health and Disability System Interim Report, which contains some directions for health workforce around skills development, around well-being, and around criticality issues. I also think there's been quite strong problem analysis undertaken around health workforce um, and suggested directions for strategic development. And then comes the challenge, I think, for the Health Workforce Advisory Board and for the Ministry, who we hope to work very closely with, and other sector players, including the education sector, of who, why, when, and resourcing, and the identification of the best options moving forward. So we start from a platform, I think, of really good available information about the health sector. But if there's one overarching observation that all of that material um, presents to us, I think, if you read it at one hit, which I tried to do over a couple of weeks, is that nationally we have no, no um, other, we, we have no really other alternative other than to face the changes that are coming and to deal with them because globally, I think we're in a situation where the health workforce is under pressure in terms of retention, in terms of attraction, and in terms of New Zealand's identity, it is such a strong component of, the, of employment in New Zealand, we must face the challenges as they're emerging. This is where we're asking for your help. We're very, very keen uh, as we get underway to undertake stakeholder meetings. We're interested over the year to meet as many people who are engaged in health workforce issues as possible, to meet representatives of the various stakeholder groups in both the regulated and unregulated health workforces. We would also like to gather up as much research-led evidence uh, and policy material as we can so we're keen to ensure that anything that's been written or thought about, that we know about it. Um, it's quite hard, I think, when you do try and do a sort of meta review, to know whether someone has written about specific needs in midwifery or specific needs about sonography or whether there is something about predictive modelling. So all of that material if we need to know about. So if you're in a research environment in any way, shape or form, we'd be very keen to know of your work. And the third thing that we'd like to do as we move forward, and that's not, these are not exclusive um, ways in which we want to engage with you, but there's some ways, is that we are very, very keen to gather up example, best practice examples, so that as we develop uh, what we think is a strategic overview, we take advantage of the hundreds dozens and hundreds of things that are happening out there in DHB land, in the community, in primary sectors, in the unregulated health workforce that are examples of very good health workforce development practice. So that's me done and dusted. Thank you very much indeed. I'm in the very lucky position of being too new to answer any really critical questions, other than to say um, I am optimistic about the future. We are not uh, we don't carry the legacy of the past, and we hope that you will engage with us in the same spirit of optimism. So thank you very much indeed.